Coming in at number 5 we have Area 51, a classic birthplace of conspiracies about aliens and UFOs, but do you know what actually goes on inside those highly secured walls? Located 120 miles northwest of Las Vegas, the base is a government controlled piece of land. The ground space of Area 51 is so big that it's around the size of Connecticut. Surrounding the base there is very little around it, far from modern living styles and even lacks cell reception, and this is by design. Design. As in 1954, the CIA was asked by the president to find a secret location and found what they were looking for here. Civilians are prohibited to enter the grounds of Area 51, with threats of a fine and imprisonment if civilians trespass or take photos of the building. In 2013, the CIA approved the release of declassified documents about the history of the site. This was the first time the US government acknowledged the existence of Area 51, even though it has been in operation since 1955. Area 51 is shrouded in mystery. According to ex government sources, this mysterious area of Nevada is mostly a test site for experimental military technology, like the SR 71 Blackbird airplane, and now a secret extraterrestrial testing facility. Additionally, Area 51 is home to the nation's overhead surveillance program. It's where some of the most important spying aircraft in American history was assembled, tested, and ultimately sent out on missions. Experts say it likely remains an area for the Air Force and US spy agencies to develop the next generation of aircraft and other weapons of war. The conspiracies around Area 51 in relation to examining aliens are due to the multiple reports of reported UFOs around the grounds of Area 51. Though these weren't UFOs, they were the aircrafts the government was testing on the grounds. That being said, since it has forever been locked away from the public, it's not for certain exactly what goes on within the walls of Area 51, but the fact that it was declassified 60 years after it began operations is a bit scary if you ask me. In at number 4 we have John Lennon CIA case. John Lennon is a pop culture icon and is best known for being one of the members of the Beatles, though the Federal Bureau of Investigation considered Lennon a threat. This is because the government wasn't too keen on a foreigner spreading anti-war, anti-Nixon messages to the rather large counterculture movement in the United States. Thus the FBI did what the FBI does best and kept detailed surveillance records of Lennon's activities while actively trying to deport him. The FBI suspected Lennon would disrupt proceedings in the 1972 presidential election, where Nixon hoped to be re-elected, with a planned tour complete with voter registration efforts and anti-war protests. To help stop him, the Immigration and Nationalization Service, which would later be absorbed into the Department of Homeland Security, began deportation proceedings against Lennon. It appears that their preemptive efforts worked. Lennon never did the tour and Nixon was re-elected. It took 14 years for the FBI to release their files on John Lennon. Historian John Wiener spent those years fighting to gain access to the FBI's secret files on John Lennon. At first, the FBI refused to release many of the documents, saying their release would endanger national security. Wiener's Freedom of Information case went all the way to the Supreme Court before the FBI agreed to settle. In those files, it seems that their biggest concern was Lennon's association with radical anti-war activities and his ability to influence voters to vote against the Nixon administration in the coming election. Therefore, the CIA led to the conclusion that his visa should be terminated in the interest of national security. John didn't go down without a fight though and fought this claim with lawyers. When that didn't work, the CIA tried to deport Lennon this time by catching him for narcotics, even though the FBI doesn't enforce possession of narcotics charges as it is a state offense. That being said, the CIA proceeded to give the Miami FBI office a discreet porter to arrange a drug bust. However, all of Lennon's files were destroyed due to what they claim to be part of a routine file destruction procedure, so this can't be known for certain. Coming in at number 3 we have the Bohemian Club. The Bohemian Club is an elite invitation only social club founded in San Francisco in 1872. The Bohemian Club began renting the campground for an annual retreat before purchasing it outright in 1899. But what actually happens at the club? Well, in June and July, some of the wealthiest and most powerful men in the country flock to the Redwood Grove in Sonoma County, California. They're all members of this so called Bohemian Club, a private all male club that 
that's counted US presidents, military officials, artists and business leaders as members. Over the years a number of those gathered club members have happened to be US presidents. Because of its secrecy, strange ceremonies and elite body of members, the Bohemian Club has long been the subject of sinister online rumours, with a number of journalists trying to infiltrate the campground just to try and get a glimpse of what actually goes on in the camp. The journalist Alex Shumatov was caught and detained for trespassing. Filmmaker Alex Jones had more success with his infiltration in 2000, where he entered the camp with a hidden camera. Jones was able to capture a ceremony called the cremation of the care. During the ceremony, members were seen wearing costumes and cremating a coffin before a 40 foot owl. While the reported Philip Weiss snuck into the Bohemian Grove in 1987 and spent a few days mingling with the rich and powerful. A former dining server described the club as a place where the elite could engage in behaviour that doesn't usually fly for people of their stature in the regular world. In the 21st century, the Bohemian Club maintained its reputation for being highly exclusive, with a predominantly Caucasian membership composed of the richest and often most politically conservative men in the United States. Coming in at number 2 we have Walt Disney working for the FBI. Who would have thought that the founder of Mickey Mouse and the Disney Empire served as an FBI informant? From 1940 until his death in 1966, Walt Disney secretly served in the FBI. Walt Disney served as a secret informer for the Los Angeles Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. According to documents that have come to light about this secret arrangement, Disney was tasked with reporting on the activities of Hollywood actors, writers, producers, directors, technicians, and union activists suspected of political subversion. At this time, communism was on the rise around the world and American officials were concerned about these ideals spreading into society. The documents report that during a strike of animators at the Disney Studio in 1941, Walt Disney publicly accused the strike leaders of communistic agitation. When Disney, whose right wing leanings were well known, testified before the House of Committee on Un American Activities in Washington, he named several of the animators who had led the strike as communists. In return for Disney's information, the director of the bureau allowed Disney to film in the FBI headquarters in Washington. For his part, Disney allowed the director access to Disney scripts and make changes in movies and episodes of the Mickey Mouse Club television show. Due to Disney providing the bureau with information and doing such a good job, he was named full special agent in charge contact in 1954. This title was given to those who were trusted informers that is able to provide transportation and equipment, as well as public relations services to the borough. And finally, in at number 1 we have they investigated ESPs. The extrasensory perception, also known as ESP, is considered a sixth sense, including claimed reception of information not gained through the recognised physical senses, but sensed with the mind. According to the FBI vault, ESP is considered a perception of information about events beyond what may be discerned through the five physical senses or deduced from past experience or knowledge. The FBI's interest in ESP goes back to 1957 when the Burrow was contacted by a man called Foos, who claimed that he could teach the blind to see. While CIA was not impressed by the tricks of Foos, it wouldn't be the end of the agency's or the FBI's interest in psychic and paranormal phenomena. From there, the FBI once spent time and money investigating extrasensory perception. There has also been reports of experimenting with ways to weaponize people with ESP. This was a highly secret program during the 1970s by the government that took place in research labs in California. The Bureau attempted to look at the phenomenon from a rational and logical viewpoint, using cold hard science and math much like the CIA and DIA later would. In their attempt to construct a laboratory test to objectively measure psychic phenomena, the results of the laboratory tests that they held remain unknown as the files were excluded from the FBI's release. Considering the interest of the Army and CIA in the FBI's psychic research, whatever their results were likely helped justify the future course of the intelligence community's research into psychic perception. Based on concerns ESP could be used as part of an international spying, the FBI spent more than three years looking into the phenomenon before they concluded there was no scientific support for their concerns. Number 5 on this list is Pine Gap. Pine Gap is a massive military base that's hid away in the Australian outback, completely away from the public's view. It's jointly run and occupied by the American and Australian governments. 
The airspace over top of it is a complete no-fly zone, and the complex itself is obviously very locked off. Many of the locals have come to speak of this place as Area 51 of Australia. Now, unlike Area 51, this place hasn't been linked to aliens. It's actually been linked to a super secret, super high-tech surveillance system. At this point, it kind of feels like common knowledge that the government is occasionally peeking in on our conversations. Well, Pine Gap in Australia may be the spot that most of that happens at. Echelon was the codename given to a massive signals intelligence collection device. It's believed that this location in Australia collects this information and stores it there. Think about that. A massive site out in the middle of the outback with all of our info stored on a mass of hard drives at somebody's fingertips. With over 800 people apparently employed at this base, there are 800 several individuals that know more about you than I think any of us would like. Your entire communications history is just waiting there to be revealed to the public. It's no wonder that this place isn't talked about too much because think about how damaging it could be if that info was leaked to the public or somebody got a hold of it. The amount of secrets that could be discovered by spending an hour or two at that place is honestly difficult to comprehend. Number four on this list is Amchitka Island. Amchitka Island is a volcanic island that's part of the Aleutian Islands. And for those of you who aren't aware, the Aleutian Islands are a grouping of islands off of the coast of Alaska that stretch into the Pacific Ocean. Now this place is really interesting because by all accounts, hardly anybody lives there at all. In fact, it's possible that there are no permanent residents there whatsoever, or that's just what the government wants us to think. Tons of areas on this island just simply can't be found on Google Earth. This would probably go completely unnoticed if it wasn't for the fact that the Americans used this place as a spot for nuclear testing several decades ago. From the 50s to the 70s, this was a spot used by the American government to test out their weapons. Obviously, you don't really want the world knowing about this or seeing your capabilities, so keeping it a secret would be important. This apparently ceased in the 70s, but then it begs the question, why is it blotted out on Google Earth? Why are there sections of this island that the world can't see. Starts to make you think that maybe this isn't just an innocent Aleutian Island in the Pacific Ocean, but actually a spot that never stopped testing weapons. Or if they did stop testing them, then maybe this is where they're developing them now. If I'm about to do something shady, then an island in the middle of nowhere with no permanent residence would certainly be my spot of choice. It's very possible that the American government feels the same way. Number three on this list is Harvey Point Defense Testing Activity Facility. This site is located in North Carolina and is definitely something that the government doesn't like to advertise. Ever wonder where the elites of the elite train? Like the super secret, super advanced soldiers that only come out for the crazy covert missions? Well, this is that place. Wikipedia writes, Specialty military air operations are located at this facility as the installation has two usable landing fields and plans for a third. The FAA Charlotte Sectional Aeronautical Chart identifies this area as Special Use Airspace R5301, which is continuously restricted from general aviation traffic from the surface of an altitude of 14,000 feet above mean sea level. Areas of Albermay Sound adjacent to the facility are also under restricted airspace, R5302, which is under the operational authority of Giant Killer, or whichever ATC has controlling authority over the airspace at that time. Harvey Point is also used for CIA paramilitary and counterterrorism courses that involve high explosives and ballistics. The explosives are used to simulate terrorist bombs and can be heard for miles in the surrounding communities. It was also used by Devgru to train for the raid that killed Osama bin Laden in a scale mock-up of his secret compound. Pretty much all of the super elite military governmental stuff is going down at this spot. The team that took out Osama bin Laden trained here, like it really doesn't get more secret and advanced than that. Also there have been a ton of rumors about the types of weapons that are being developed here too. Incredibly advanced aircraft that will have capabilities hard for us to even understand are apparently being built here. The advancements may not just stop with equipment either, but may even go further to people as well. Obviously, Iron Man and Captain America are superheroes and they aren't real, but if there ever was a site where the government was to be experimenting with things like that, then this would be it. Either incredibly advanced war bodysuits or literally making superhumans, then 
This could be the place where all that goes down. Number two on this list is Jeanette Island. Jeanette Island is located in the East Siberian Sea and belongs to the Russians. This island is shrouded in mystery though for the history it has had with Google Earth. Similarly to our other creepy Alaskan island, when you go on to Google Earth, you can't actually see anything here. In fact, for a while, all you could see was a black blob where an island should be, and then more recently it was changed so that there's literally no landmass here at all. The Sun writes, It's not clear why the island is blurred, although there have been issues around whether the territory belongs to Russia or the USA. Some conspiracy theorists have suggested the spot is an ideal location for a secret Russian military base as it's relatively close to the US and Canada. Google often blocks out military locations on its maps tool, including air bases in Germany, missile silos in Russia, and bases in Afghanistan. Images of the island were provided to Google by the International Bathymetric Chart of the Arctic Ocean, a project to map the Arctic Ocean initiated in St. Petersburg, Russia. This Russian military base thing has definitely been gaining some traction. As the Sun said, this base would be pretty close to North America, which is something Russia would definitely want. It's also super secluded and the perfect spot to be conducting some really questionable experiments or projects that you don't want prying eyes of the world to see. When Google was inevitably asked about why they don't have a picture for this, the spokesperson for them declined to comment. And number one on this list is Zenomensk. This is a Russian city and one that's largely been kept off the radar since its birth because it's something that the Russian government doesn't want anyone to know about. Passport Symphony says, Zenomensk was founded in 1948 as a missile test range facility under the name of Kasputin Yar. Multiple launches of test rockets and satellites were carried out at this site throughout the years. Eventually, Kasputin Yar became a cosmodrome in 1966 and like the other cities on this list, it wasn't shown on the map until the 1990s. There are many things that make Zanamens the most mysterious city in Russia and one of them is a UFO crashing that happened in the 1950s. Some even argue that this incident allowed the Russians to design Sputnik and achieve an early lead in the space race. This story was kept secret and only recently became known to the media. This made Kasmitsyn Yar known as the Russian Roswell. However, note that this isn't the only mystery that happened at Zenomensk, but rather the only one that made it public. The site's function was interrupted after the fall of the Soviet Union, but it began working again in 1998. We got missile launches, we got weapon development, UFO landings. It's no wonder that the Russians don't want anybody catching on to this place. The fact that it was literally around for almost 50 years before it even appeared on a map is super questionable as well. What the heck was going on at this place for 50 years that was so secretive that they couldn't have anyone even knowing about its existence? One has to think that this place is similar to Area 51 in America. I personally wouldn't be surprised if Russia is still using this as a spot to do some really scary and, and probably pretty questionable experiments without anybody knowing. Those could involve aliens, genetic mutations, maybe even advanced weaponry development. It's hard to say truly what's going on at this place and it's likely that Russia kind of wants to keep it that way. Number five on this list is secret laws. Now I wish I could be more specific about which secret laws I'm referring to but if I knew that then they wouldn't be secret in the first place. I wasn't actually aware of this but the government of the United States and I'm assuming other governments around the globe as well can pass secret laws. These are laws that are specifically not revealed to the public and are just on a need-to-know basis. Full Full on legal laws that are now put into practice are getting secretly signed and passed by the higher ups and we have no idea what they could even be. This could literally range from making the word ketchup illegal to, I don't know, making it totally legal to steal a car on the 30th of August if there's a full moon out. Alright, so obviously those are wildly extreme examples and I doubt that those things are actually happening but you get my point. In America these laws are called presidential policy directives which is a fancy way of saying that it's an executive order from the president, which can be revealed to the public if they wanted to, or can remain secret. These don't happen in just crazy times of crisis either, they happen a lot more frequently than you may believe. During his time in office, President Obama signed 43 different PPDs, and to this day, there are 16 of them that the public literally has no knowledge of whatsoever. That is a lot of laws that are just floating around that we literally don't know anything about. Now one has to imagine that these probably don't concern the public, and has to do with other secret 
secretive government stuff, but what secret government stuff does it concern? Secret deals going down with other countries? Covert missions that the public can't know about? Anything regarding extraterrestrials? This is all on the table with these PPDs and we may honestly never know. A fun and also scary statistic is that President Reagan, when he was in office, passed at least 325 PPDs. That is just an insane amount of laws that we don't know anything about. It also begs the question, is this too much power for the president to have? Comment your thoughts down below about these things. Honestly curious to know what you guys think. Number four on this list is criminal hackers. One would think that hacking should be something that the government would excel at. That they would be pumping money into hacking programs to train people to become elite at that skill. This actually isn't the case though and the FBI isn't as good as they'd like. This is why when something needs to be hacked or something needs to be protected from hacking, they enlist the help of criminal hackers. People who've been convicted of hacking related crimes and are now behind bars. This is a win for hackers because if they help the FBI, then they'll receive a lighter sentence. This also isn't the first time the American government has looked to criminals for support. How about Operation Paperclip? After the Second World War, the United States government reached out to German scientists and brought them in to help them build the atomic bomb. Now they're doing something similar with convicted criminals to help them with other things. Obviously the government doesn't like to talk about this too much because enlisting criminals doesn't make the public feel too great, especially if you're the one who was targeted by said criminal. If I was the American government, or any government for that matter, I'd be taking some of that military funding of theirs and tossing it into hacking. It truly does seem like the way of the future. Number three on this list is Churchill's secret UFOs. Winston Churchill is known for his overwhelming leadership of the British people during one of their most trying times, World War II. What he often isn't known for though, because he made sure that this never got out, was his deep fascination with UFOs. Files that weren't released until 2010 actually revealed that the British government under Winston Churchill were more than fascinated with the presence of UFOs and aliens in our universe. In fact, they had a task force that met weekly to discuss such things as how to contact or capture said UFOs. There are thousands and thousands of documents that were released detailing just an obscene amount of things in relation to aliens and UFOs from the British government. We now understand that this was a massive operation for the British government and Churchill, but at the time, nobody knew about it at all. This was because Churchill apparently didn't want to cause any panic for the people and kept all of this info completely under wraps. I find it interesting how invested they were in this alien and UFO narrative though. I think it's safe to assume that these days most governments are looking into extraterrestrial life, but Churchill had his people deep down the rabbit hole. This also kind of begs the question, well, is there still more to the story that we don't know about? I wouldn't be surprised if sometime from now more documents are revealed that potentially point to Churchill and the British government having some encounters with said extraterrestrials that we were never privy to. Number two on this list is Lost Plutonium. Okay, so this one is honestly just negligent. Charlotte Children details what happens by writing, the United States and India came together for a joint mission in the 1960s that, if successful, would monitor China's nuclear development. The goal was to install radioactive isotope PU-238 powered sensors, but hazardous conditions forced the team to evacuate the Himalayas before the installation was complete. When they returned, the sensors had vanished. No one has tracked down the plutonium devices, but locals believe that they are still active in the area and are responsible for melting mountain caps that are causing massive floods. All right, so just Think about that, guys. The government literally just lost a bunch of extremely dangerous plutonium and then was like, ah, oh, shucks, I guess we'll just leave it then, and then left the Himalayan mountains in a state of disarray. They're now causing major negative environmental impacts on the mountains and those who live around them. Not to mention the entire other aspect of this. What if someone we don't want finding a bunch of dangerous plutonium found a bunch of dangerous plutonium? Plutonium can be used to make nuclear weapons and having some rando just pick this thing up in the Himalayas probably isn't the best thing for society. This is why this failed venture hasn't been talked about too much and the government likes to keep it under wraps. Next time though guys, let's try to be more careful what we do with the super dangerous, super radioactive chemical I think. Number one on this list is Project Sunshine. This thing was just 
totally messed up and is truly almost unbelievable. Wikipedia writes, Project Sunshine was a series of research studies that began in 1953 to ascertain the impact of radioactive fallout on the world's population. The project was initially kept secret and only became known publicly in 1956, commissioned jointly by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and USAF Project RAND, Sunshine sought to examine the long-term effects of nuclear radiation on the biosphere due to repeated nuclear detonations of increasing yield. With the conclusion from Project Gabriel that radioactive isotope SR90 represented the most serious threat to human health from nuclear fallout, Project Sunshine sought to measure the global dispersion of SR90 by measuring its concentration in the tissues and bones of the dead. A particular interest was tissue from the young whose developing bones have the highest propensity to accumulate SR90 and thus the highest susceptibility to radiation damage. Sunshine elicited a great deal of controversy when it was revealed that many of the remains sampled were utilized without prior permission from the deceased or from relatives of the dead which wasn't known until many years later. Okay, so let's just go over that last part again guys. People didn't know that the government was testing on dead bodies of their loved ones. The American government was literally stealing the dead bodies of their citizens, prioritizing the bodies of the young when they did it, and then releasing a horribly radioactive chemical around them to see what would happen. And also, who the hell named this? Project Sunshine? What the hell is possibly bright and sunshiny about this? This is just messed up, man. It's no wonder the government wanted to keep this a secret. They knew that this was horribly wrong and bad. I guess we just need to cross our fingers and hope that something like this isn't happening secretly under our noses right now.